All right, Carlton people, welcome. Teams are in for the round three clash with the Sydney Swans and some unexpected changes. Uh, we've got three of them. Uh, obviously, we talked about Garlett and Fasolo and, and putting themselves in a position where they're probably going to be dropped. And it just so happens that both of them have been dropped. Uh, the final changes in the end. So Caleb Marchback comes in for his first game of the season. Obviously, very exciting to see him back. Lockie O'Brien comes into the side. And the forgotten man, Levi Kasbolt, comes into the side. So we've got Alex Fasolo, Charlie Kern obviously out for, for injury reasons. And, and Jared Garlett comes out of the side. So... Yeah, um, didn't didn't see Levi coming in. There was a little bit of talk about him, and he was, you know, obviously when you when you're playing a, a big three in attack with Charlie, Harry, and Mitch, you know, the argument is that you want to replace one of them when the other goes out. So interesting that Levi's come in. Um, I think with with Levi, and we'll get to him in a moment, but he, you know, there's a little bit probably less pressure on him now. I think this time last year, he's our our number one forward, and that's probably just not suited to him and so he comes in now he's got Harry there he's got Mitch there and uh, he probably doesn't get that that best defender so I can I can just see Levi coming in and and bobbing up and kicking three or four I really can um, so we'll see how it goes um, March Bank obviously we talked about him and I mean I was <coughs> I was a little bit more cautious with him I had would have preferred to see him playing in the VFL uh, and then coming to the side. But the reality is with, with Caleb Marchbank, there's, there's a few elements to this. So on the one hand, he's, he's just so important to us and he's a, a key, key player in what we're trying to do. Um, secondly, you know, obviously the buddy situation and then the Sydney forward line, we want to have our best defenders there as possible. And, you know, when you've got Jared Garland in there, it's like, do you take a, you know, let's say Caleb Marchbank's at, you know, 90% of his full capabilities, he's probably still better than what Jared Garland is at 100%, uh, a little bit more of a, a trusted, reliable guy. And uh, thirdly, he's just, he's that good. You know, Caleb Marchbank is that good. And uh, he he warrants the ability to come into the side. And then the other thing as well, you've got to trust the coaching staff. You know, we obviously, we've had Caleb Marchbank for a few years now, and I don't think we'd be putting him out this week had we not been 100% sure that he's ready to get through a full game. So that's the other thing as well. So, you know, having said that, I think one thing I want to stress to uh, to us is, you know, once the decisions are made, that's it. You've got to back in the boys. You've got to back in the coaching staff. I know that we've, we've got opinions and we all think certain ways and whatnot, but uh, let's not have pot shots now. Jared Garland, obviously he's been omitted and, and Fasolo as well. They've just, look, they've just not performed to a level that we need from them to stay in the side. And you know, they'll go, they'll go back, they'll have their chance to regain some confidence, get some form going, and uh, they'll be pushing for selection as well. So I wish them, the both of them, all the best. And obviously Charlie, as well, when he gets back from injury, uh, hopefully he will be back in, in full flight and we can see this, this big three-headed monster um, you know, in attack. The other thing with Levi as well is, you know, he, he's not a ruckman obviously, but he has pinched he does do a little bit of pinch hitting in the ruck, and he's done that before. So that will allow Harry to stay in the goal square. So that's a positive there. Um, so just going through the, the final teams, um, even with the with the Swans. So in comes Tom McCartan, Jackson Thurlow, and Jordan Dawson, and out goes Lewis Malikin. He's a good player. Uh, Colin O'Riordan. He's omitted, and Ryan Clark. So interesting. I don't know too much about Tom McCartan. I know that he's uh, Paddy McCartan's brother. Uh, Jackson Thurlow, I don't know much about him, and, and even Jordan Dawson. I'm, I'm not very familiar, and that's probably a, a positive thing for me because, you know, we come up against the Swans, and you know, I just did a, a podcast with with Adam Cox, and uh, we made a point about the Swans, and they'd be going into this season thinking finals. This is, we're a finals team. We're making finals. We're, we're going for the Premiership, and so to be 0-2 and uh, to have that mindset, it's obviously a bit of a shock to the system. Um, they've been, they were really, really poor in the first week and by their, their own admission, I think they'd say that. And then last week they were a little bit better against the Crows, uh, but ultimately the Crows were just too good. And so, you know, for a finals team, they'd be going into this week and this, it'd be an absolute must win for them mentally. So they're going to come out firing and I know that we've had good patches and I know that we, you know, look, I, I back us to win this week, but 
We've got to be really wary. We, we, we cannot afford to have a goalless quarter. We cannot afford to have a quarter that just falls against us. We, we really need to try and tighten it up. And you, always, you also think about our history at uh, Marvel Stadium, or as it's previously been known, Eddie had and, and whatnot. It's, it's not great. It's a smaller ground. Probably plays into the Swans' hands a little bit. Um, but having said that, it's a quick deck. So we're going to have to really play a four-quarter uh, have a four quarter performance to get on, uh, get over the Swans this week. I think we can do it, but uh, it's not just something that's given. So, really, I want to see us earn it. And you know, what, you know, if we do win this week, it'll just be such a relief for the supporters. You know, obviously, it's been a tough few years. You know, we've had this new rebuild, and I think it'll give the supporters a little bit of something to, you know, a bit of hope to, to to latch onto, rather than just sort of talking up our young boys and. And whatnot, it'll be important for us to see the actual results. So, looking forward to that. I'll run through the teams. Back line we've got Liam Jones, Lockie Plowman, Kate Simpson, Daisy Thomas, Jacob Weeder, and Nick Newman. That's a pretty, that's a pretty solid back six right there. That's a pretty set back six. You've got, you've got a good mix of uh, just experience in there. Obviously, Nick Newman coming up against his his old side. Simo in a back pocket. I like that a little bit more. Um, I think he and Daisy will switch up. Uh, and so, you know, Jared Garland's not in that, in that six. And so it just gives me a little bit more confidence. And obviously, um, you know, on the interchange bench, you've got Caleb Marchbank. So he'll come into there. And uh, I think Daisy Thomas will probably push up a little bit more. If not Daisy, maybe Nick Newman. So we'll just see how the game's going. But uh, that's looking a lot more uh, assured for me. In the center, we've got Mark Murphy, Cripps, and Samo. And uh, the followers there... Uh, Andrew Phillips, Will Setterfield, and Paddy Dow. Just a couple of points there. Mark Murphy obviously copped a hit last week and uh, from all reports didn't train a lot this week. So, uh, look, he'll still be fit and ready to go, but um, really need a good game from Murphy this week, really just to, to silence the haters a little bit. And, um, you know, if we're going to win, he needs to play at his best. Uh, and that's the reality of it. Cripper and Samo, yeah, just continuing on with their their games. Um, Will Setterfield, big game for him this week. We, we played him obviously as a, as, a, you know, as a tagger, which was interesting last week against Rockliffe. Um, I don't think that's his game. I think Will Setterfield has class. And so, yeah, I think, you know, third game of the season, he's probably getting into the swing of things now. Uh, young body, and so I think he'll be roaring to go. And he's another one that if we're going to win this week, um, obviously not having brought in Matt Kennedy, a lot rests on the on the shoulders of Will Setterfield to really help out and, and provide a chop out for Cripper and you know maybe even give Cripps the opportunity to go forward and rest, you know, for periods of the game. Forward line, Ed Kerno, Harry Mackay, Sam Walsh, Zach Fisher, Mitch McGovern, and Michael Gibbons. This is interesting. The first thing that jumps out to me there is uh, Zach Fisher playing in a forward pocket. Now the way that it's written down right now, it says that Zach Fisher is uh, next to Jake Lloyd. That's interesting. Uh, I don't know if that's been done on purpose, but I spoke earlier in the week about Jake Lloyd. He has to have an opponent. You can't just let him run around. So Zach Fish is actually someone that can probably do it. He's got a, uh, the body type that can do it. I think he's got the speed to do it. Jake Lloyd knows how to find the footy, that's for sure. And I think that might, if, if that's something that's been done on purpose, I don't mind that. Combine that with the fact that Zach Fish is pretty crafty. If he can come in and play a role in that small forward department, that's going to be a, a big tick for us. So... That obviously sticks out to me. Uh, Sam Miles, you know, half forward flank, you know, he'll run up into the midfield and he'll just gut run all day. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Ed Kerno, again, it's another week with this role, this role of his, uh, he's just got to work his way through it. Um, you know, it's, it's week three. He's had two weeks in this new role. So let's settle down. Uh, obviously, he's got to be a threat. He's got to be able to provide, um, you know, tackling pressure and keep his spot in the side. The other thing as well, you know, Harry Mackay playing as a half forward and Mitch as that, that forward out of the goal square. That's interesting. Uh, I wonder how that's going to play out for the rest of the game. Um, you've got Levi Kaspar on the bench, and so he comes in, and I would have thought Levi plays out of the goal square. Um, I mean, that's, that's the thing that I think of at the moment. So that'll be interesting. But, you know, obviously it's good to have options. You know, big, you know, three key targets. One of them will play off the ground. So yeah, looking forward to that. And as I said earlier, Levi can, can pitch hit in the ruck. He's done it before. Not, he's not a super ruck, ruckman, obviously, but he can do it. Uh, the interchange bench, Cam Paulson, obviously, I said March Bank, I said Levi, and Lockie O'Brien comes in for his first game of the year. He's, he's a forgotten man, Lockie. He obviously, you know, high draft pick last year, played, I think it was 17 games, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, and you know he'll come in and he's got another layer of running power and he's another one that he's a runner uh, and he's the type of player that we need to beat the Swans this week so I'm looking forward to seeing him stake his claim there's there's not a whole lot of pressure on him to sort of throw him in the deep end and say come on son we need something out of you um, but having said that he he obviously started the season on the outer so he's got to figure out uh, a way that he can impact this game this week and then sort of really give the coaches something to think about moving forward I'm excited 5.45 a.m. bounce here in uh, in Tel Aviv. Looking forward to it. I don't think I'm going to have many friends coming to watch it with me because it's such a such an early game. Uh, but, you know, everyone's welcome to come past. Really looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get a win. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel on Facebook, please do so. We'd love to have you all join the conversation. And also, the latest podcast I just did with uh, my man Adam Cox, I'll put the, the link in the description, uh, but it was a ripper, really good, really good chat with him, he's a, a mad Carlton supporter and he's also a, a mad NBA follower as well. So if you like your basketball, if you like your, your footy, uh, great conversation with him. Thank you so much for your support, uh, we've almost cracked the, the, thousand, the thousand mark, so that'll be a little milestone, so looking forward to that. And uh, let's do this, go the blue.